Hey guys, we are back with some more Arizona Diamondbacks franchise mode. And in this one, we are going to fix our bullpen. Because it is really not the greatest right now. Steven Matz with a 720 ERA. Tejada with a 464. Kella with an 871. Feliz with a 365, so he's been doing good so far. Uh, Schaffin with a 619. Chen with a 759. Batanzas with an 1170. And Archie Bradley... Also one of the better ones, 293 in 15 innings pitched. So we're going to be trading a couple of these guys here and just replace them with other relief pit pitchers because, again, I believe 75 to 80% of our problems will be fixed if we just fix the bullpen. So Andrew Schaffin is going to be going to the Mets in exchange for Luis Avilan. He's 31 years of age, C potential, 81 overall. He's got one year left on his deal. $3.2 million is what he's making. But Andrew Schaffin is a lot worse than Avilon as we take a look at Avilon. Even without the morale boost, he's still much better than Schaffin. And we have a top-tier coaching staff, so his morale is more than likely going to boost when he joins us. So he'll probably be like an 82 or an 83 when we trade for him. And he, he's, his expectation is the bullpen. He's playing there right now, so he's already ecstatic about that. And he's happy about everything else. He wants to play for a contender, of course. But I wouldn't imagine that'll be too big of a deal for us. Because, remember, the thing that we're trying to improve is our bullpen. I, I feel like if we, once we improve our bullpen, then everything else will just sort of fall into place. Especially given the talent that we have as far as our bats go. So Luis Avilan for Andrew Schaffin, straight up. Now, Avilan and Schaffin are effectively the same pitcher, but what separates from Avilan from Schaffin is the fact that he has five pitches instead of three, like Schaffin does. He has the two-seam, the four-seam, the change-up, the curveball, and the sinker, whereas Schaffin only has a slider, sinker, and a four-seam. So that's what we're going off here, and Avilan's stats are much, much better than Schaffin's are. He has a 135 ERA, only one earned run against so far in six innings pitched, compared to Schaffin, who in 16 innings pitched, 619 ERA, so a little bit smaller of a sample size for Avilon. But even going back to the past couple of sim years for Avilon, he really isn't that bad at all. 343 ERA, 361 ERA, and you compare that to Schaffin, obviously. Uh, 366. He wasn't too bad last year, but 481 in year number one, 619 this year so far. So we're going to be doing this straight up. Schaffin for Avilon. There you go. And now the next trade we're, we're going to be making is to the Athletics. And we're going to be trading for Lou Trevino and a guy named Velasquez. I'm not sure where he is. I think he's a, is he a 70? Yeah, he's right here. 70 overall. Ray Velasquez. He's got a very, very strong arm. 91. Pretty accurate as well. 67. Break at 95, so it looks like if we need him, he could be a solid pitcher to bring up during September call-ups, or he'll, he'll even be a solid pitcher for AAA. But again, the real attraction here is Lou Trevino, 29 years of age, B potential, 83 overall, but the key here is the salary, 720k for him, and his velocity and break, 99. Hits over 9, 94. K's over 9, 83. His walks over 9 is... Kind of not where I would like it to be at 50. His control is at 54. But everything else is pretty solid for him. And his ERA, zero. <laughs> so far in 12 innings pitched. He has not let a single run by in all 12 innings that he's pitched. So who we're going to be trading here is someone down here. Jay Schneider. He's 28 years of age, 61 overall deep potential. Not needed really. Uh, he, he'll just be going the other way for a little bit of trade value. But the real thing here going back, Dallin Patances. He has not been doing great at all so far this season. I mean, he's in the past two sim years, 142, 334. So he's bound to get back to where he was before at some point. But the thing is that we are actually above our budget right now. So we have to cut salary somewhere. And our bullpen's been struggling. We need to change something up. He's 33 years of age, so we're shaving a few years off by getting Lutrovino, who's 29. And we have a few more years out of him if we retain him rather than Batanzas, who's already 33. 
and he's unhappy here. He wants to be the closer when she's in the bullpen. Yeah, he's making a good amount of salary, so he's happy with that. He's happy with the coaching, and he's not happy with the region because he's far away from New York. I mean, it doesn't matter too much to him, but it's still negatively impacting his morale. Uh, T performance, he wants to be on a contender, which he has not, obviously, at the moment, <laughs> given the performance of our bullpen, and that he wants to be performing at an all-star level, which he is absolutely failing at. So, he, yeah, he's going to be going the other way, and I feel like Lou Trevino, he'll give us uh, a much-needed morale boost to our bullpen, and not only that, but it'll save us some money as well. We're going to have our cash flow from negative 134k to 172k just by trading Batances for Trevino who once again he's he's pretty solid just based off of his stats i mean you're number 1 and 2 434 413 he's not he's not great but he's not terrible either but just based off what we've seen so far he it looks like he could have a career year here uh, should we Get him on the Diamondbacks, and that is exactly what we're going to do. So, Batanzas, thank you for what you have done here for Arizona. But we just need to shake something up right now. And we're going to do this trade with the Athletics. There you go. Sounds like a good deal to us. Sounds like a very good deal to me as well. And let's see. So, Trevino is actually now an 85. So, his morale went up with us. He, of course, there's nothing we can do about his contract until the offseason season. But he's very happy with the top-tier coaching. He's happy that he's in the bullpen. Uh, Team performance, he doesn't really care about. So we have an 85 overall now in the bullpen. And Luis Avilan, so Avilan is actually now an 83. As I suspected, he was an 81 when he was with the Mets. Now an 83. So our bullpen is looking much, much better compared to having, you know, Schaffin in there and a struggling Batances. So, we're going to see what our bullpen looks like now. So, here's our bullpen now. Matt and Tejada are still in the same place. But now we have Avilon, Feliz, Trevino, and Chen as the mid-relief pitchers. I decided to put Keone Kella as the setup guy because he's struggling a little bit as the mid-relief. Maybe he'll have a little bit more success as the setup guy. And then, of course, Archie Bradley is staying put. So, there you go. There is the... New and improved, hopefully improved, <laughs> Arizona Diamondbacks bullpen, and we'll do some simulating here. So the fun thing is here that we're actually going up against the Mets in the next series, which, of course, we traded Andrew Schaffin to, so we're going to see what happens in this series. Series against the Mets, and McAllister pulled a muscle. Today's game, he'll be injured for a day or two, keep active, and there's two wins out of three possible. So a 14-4 win there in that game number three. 2 nothing win and a 2-3 loss. So, for the most part, pretty solid series. Would have liked all three wins, of course, but it's a start. And series against Atlanta, we have a four-game series here. Let's see what happens in the first three games. And that'll be a win. Ought to utilize Rick McAllister, a loss. Uh, Rutherford's injured only for a few days, though, so we'll keep him active as well. And there's another win against Atlanta, so two out of three so far. And final game against Atlanta. Let's see what it holds for us. 8-7 victory. All right. We're starting to win some games here. Hopefully, that didn't just jinx us. Game against Colorado. That'll be a 6-2 loss. All right. Rutherford no longer injured. Auto-utilize. And one more game, and that'll be a 7-1 loss. Oh, my God. Did I just jinx us? I think I did. <laughs> Let's see what this series against St. Louis holds for us. And that will be, all right, a win and then a loss. And one more game. That'll be a 1-0 win. All right. So, our pitching... Looks pretty solid in these games. Of course, it was a little bit rough in that those two games against Colorado. But other than that, for the most part, it's been pretty good. So we're going to keep going here. What is going to happen? And that'll be pff, two losses. 9-3, 4-3. All right. So as soon as I start praising our pitching a little bit, it just goes down the drain again. Let's see what's going on here. So Russ Iyer's currently at a 2-11. Uh, it's brutal. Starling Marte, 289, he's doing his job. Mookie Betts, 321. Monty, 283. Sanchez, 429 in 35 at bats. Very nice. Peralta, 220, he's been cold. Jake Lamb, 206, my goodness. Flores, 283. Avila, 246, and he's cold as well. Oh, that's brutal. I'm going to put Wilmer Flores ahead of Alex Sanchez because he has 11 home runs so far. If he can keep that up in the number five spot, 
then we might end up getting some more runs with guys like Bats and Muncy on base, especially because Bats and Muncy have pretty good batting averages. So we're going to try this out right here. Flores ahead of Sanchez. And then what I also want to try out, I want to try Peralta at number one. That might be a little bit odd, especially since he's cold right now and he's not the fastest guy and he's not good at stealing either. But Russ Ayers hasn't exactly been useful in that spot either. He's only got nine stolen bases so far. Same thing for Starling Marte, so it's not like he's doing that too much either. So we're going to try out Peralta in the number one spot. And then Marte, or do I want to do Marte then Peralta? We'll try Marte and then Peralta so that Marte can try to steal bases since he's pretty good at that. And then Peralta will be second. Bats, Monsi, Flores. I'll go Ayers and then Sanchez, Lamb, Avila. I'm also going to switch Flores with Olivo on the left-handed pitching DH lineup. And for Peralta, he Peralta can stay down here on the left-handed pitching lineup because he doesn't have nearly as good contact versus lefties as he does versus righties. He got that 92 compared to a 56. And I think I'm going to try the same thing here as we did for the right-handed pitching lineup, except have Flores up here instead of Ayers and then switch Flores with Marte. Because, once again, Flores... He's been much better so far than Russ Ayers has. And I'll put Olivo... Do I want to put Ayers ahead of Olivo? I'll put Olivo ahead of Ayers. So that'll be Ayers at number six. And we'll do the same thing here. Flores right there. And I guess Ayers will be number five here since there's no DH. So these are the new lineups. Let's hope that it does something because... Uh, I'm tired of losing. And we already made changes to our bullpen. So if... The, ball, the, the changes to the bullpen work, then I'm not entirely sure exactly what it would be. So the good news is that Michael Waka is heating up now. He's at a 42 ERA, 83 overall, and he's still below all-star level, but it's better than it was before. Paxton is still hot, 3-1-3 ERA, 90 overall. He's been solid so far this season. Robbie Ray, he's actually cold, but he's still got that 367 ERA. He's at all-star level at the moment. So I'm not too worried about him. Jacin's actually cold, but he's still got that pretty decent ERA at a 374. He is at, or he's above the league average. And then Taiwan Walker, he's had a bit of a rough season so far. Uh, he's failing at the league average. Matt's, his ERA has gotten better. Uh, Tejada's ERA, I believe, has gotten better as well. Avilan, Avilan he, he has been impressive so far. Only three earned runs. So we'll see what happens with him as we go on. But it looks like he's been pretty solid so far. Feliz, his ERA has gone up a little bit as well. Trevino. Trevino still has that zero <laughs> ERA. My goodness. Uh, Chad Chen, 694. Kella, 874. I don't think he's pitched at all so far in the simulation. Uh, at least in this video. And then Archie Bradley, 393. So he's gotten his ERA back up there a little bit. That's unfortunate. So we're going to see what those changes to the lineups do. And we'll obviously hope for the best. If not, then we might have to make some more changes. So a three-game series against Cincinnati. Let's see what happens. That's going to be a loss, a win, and a win. All right, so two out of three. A 6-7 loss there. That was a little bit unfortunate. But in the two games that we won, our pitching was solid. Our offense was solid. Really can't complain too much. Four game series against Miami. Let's hope that we can take at least three of these games. And we have the same record as Miami as well. So this should be a very interesting series. Here we go. And that'll be two wins. All right. Give me one more here. There you go. All right. We're starting to improve, but I'm not going to say that we're perfect just yet because you've all seen what happens when I talk. <laughs> eight, eight to five win there against Miami game number one. Two nothing loss. Pitching was fine there. Offense didn't show up. 5-4 win, 12-4 win against Miami. Perfect. So we are currently two and a half games back of the Rockies. Luckily, our division is not that good this year. So we still definitely have a chance at the playoffs. Where do we sit in terms of the wild card? We are three and a half games back of the wild card. So we actually have a better chance of catching the Rockies for first in our division than we do for the wild card. All right. So definitely want to make any games against the Rockies count. And a three-game series here against Washington. We're getting very close to the draft. I believe this game right here against San Diego is the day of the draft. So we really have to finish up whatever we're doing draft-wise, scouting prospects-wise. And then 
after the series. I guess, I guess in the middle of the series against San Diego, we'll check out all the prospects that are available, and then we'll do the draft. Solid three-game sweep of the Washington Nationals. 4-1 win, 9-4 win, 10-3 win. The draft is in two days, so we'll simulate 1-2, and this is the draft day. So I don't want to go any further in terms of simulating games, but we have a... What is that? That is that is a six-game winning streak, two games against Miami, then three games against Washington, and then actually a seven-game winning streak. <laughs> so that that's... Yeah. We're now officially back in it, I would say. We're 33-29, and 29, and we are first in our division now. We're only .5 games ahead of the Rockies, though, so we have to make sure that we keep this pace up. So as we take a look at our lineups, Marte, 278, Peralta, 227. So Peralta... Uh, he didn't really improve much over the course of that simulation, but at least he didn't go completely cold. So he, he stayed consistent at the very least. Uh, Mookie Betts, 316. Monty, 279. Flores, 284. Ayers, 258. So Ayers is now heating up in that sixth slot. That's good. Sanchez, 375 and 48 at bats. That's, ex- that's actually pretty insane given his. Uh, Lack of experience, especially 375 batting average in only 48 at-bats. Jake Lamb, 236. He's finally starting to heat up. And Alex Avila, 260. So he's at least stayed consistent as well. Olivo, 273. Castro, 319. And McAllister, 284. So our bats are finally starting to come alive more consistently. And as we take a look at our pitching, Robbie Ray, 346. Waka, 454. Is he at uh, all-star level now? No, he's still below, but he's definitely improved as the season has gone on. Paxton, 280 ERA, 91 overall. Now he has had quite the season. Chassin, 414 ERA, 83 overall. Has he gotten any growth? Uh, yeah, it looks like he's, yeah, because he's got that contender team performance now as well. He's got up there to an 83. Taiwan Walker, 527, it's been a bit of a rough season for him. He's still failing at the league average, unfortunately. But hopefully he can get that in the gear before the playoffs. Uh, Steven Matz, 457 ER right now. That was much, much worse before. So he's still failing at the league average, obviously, just given where his numbers are at currently. But I would say as of recently, his ERA has been much better. Orlando Tejada has been much better as well. 376, Avilan, 331, Feliz, 392. Trevino, 250. Chad Chen, 579. Kella, 707. So Kella's been better as the setup. And Bradley, 322. So he got this, his ERA back down there. It was about a 390, I believe, before. Now it's that back down there to a 322. So the bullpen and pitching in general has been pretty good as of recent. And the bat's been pretty good as well. So Really not much to complain about. Let's check out all the prospects. So obviously there's all the blue chip prospects. Guzman, Cruz. I don't think we're getting any of these guys. Joel Rios, Espinosa, Keys, Keyes, <laughs> Blocker. I, I Again, I don't think we're getting any of these guys. We'd be lucky to get one of them. So I'm just not even going to really focus on any of them. But we'll take a quick look at all of them anyway. Alonzo Cedeno. Cabrera, there you go, there's all the blue chips, so now let's take a look at all the prospects that I have personally scouted all the way, and it looks like we don't have as much as we did last year, uh, but we'll still go through all of them, we, there is a couple of 80 potentials here that I have my eye on, so first up is Esteban Ramos, the second baseman, 70 potential, good contact, and a great fielder, great defensively, great with speed as well, so He's got, certainly got the potential to be in the MLB. Aaron Beard, 75 potential, uh, pretty much well-rounded all around. He looks solid. Now, Sean Trojanowski, 19 years of age, third baseman, 80 potential, only 50 overall, so he's got a ways to go. Uh, He's not particularly great in any category, but just given that he's got that 80 potential, we've got to seriously consider him if he's still there by our pick. I'm not sure where we're picking, but if he's still there then he's definitely got to be, I would say, one of our top choices. Eric Walsh, the first baseman, 70 potential. We already have a couple of 70 potential first basemen in Padilla and Parham. So Eric Walsh, 
I would say isn't a priority. But if he's still there, let's say with our second round pick, then he would be a good pickup. Word of Kemper, the third baseman, Rodney Word of Kemper, he's got great hitting stats, attributes, I should say. Uh, not a great fielder, unfortunately, for a third baseman. I like to have the arm strength and arm accuracy up there, so I don't know if I'll be picking him. I mean, he does have his secondary positions as a first baseman and shortstop, so he could definitely work out as a first baseman. But uh, there's other prospects for sure that I would like better than him. Roger Sekrise. Now, he's an interesting one because he's got that 70 potential, but he's already a 70 overall, so he'll be ready by next year to play in the MLB. His contact's pretty good. Uh, very good, actually. His power's decent as well. Uh, plate vision, discipline, fielding, uh, reaction, all up there. Arm accuracy and arm strength are unfortunate as a third baseman, but he could double as a first baseman. And then he's got the speed at 60, stealing 50. So I would say I would definitely take him over someone like Word Kemper or, or Eric Walsh as well. Trojanowski would be my pick over Sekrais for sure, but Sekrais looks very, very solid. If we if he drops down to the second round, then I would definitely consider getting him with that pick. Maurizio Esparza, 65 potential. Uh, he's pff, above average or average everywhere, so there's nothing that really stands out about him. I wouldn't, he definitely wouldn't be my first choice. Horatio Galeski, uh, 70 potential, right fielder. And he's great defensively, great speed as well. Uh, his hit, hitting stats are about average. I, I, I keep saying stats, I should be saying attributes. But still, uh, he's great, definitely great defensively. So if we need a defensive player to pick up for potentially as soon as next year, he might be an option. Uh, Jeff Dickinson, 75 potential, 55 overall, center fielder. Good contact, good plate discipline. Good speed, stealing, decent reaction. As a center fielder, I would like his arm strength and accuracy to be a bit better. As his feeling as well, so I'm not sure uh, if I would be taking him. There's definitely guys who I like better than him. If he, if he's still there in the fifth round by chance, then I would say he'll he'll be a solid bet for that pick. Uh, center fielder Michael Gowdy, 75 potential, 60 overall. Good defensively, very good defensively. He's got that arm. I would definitely take him over Jeff Dickinson. He's got the reaction. He's got the speed, stealing. His batting attributes are around average to above average. So a solid defensive center fielder. Bullington, 65 potential, 55 overall, 18 years of age. Not really anywhere to be found offensively, but he's got great speed, great reaction, great fielding. Not great arm strength and accuracy for a center fielder. So I would definitely take Gowdy over him. Uh, Chuck Leifer, another center fielder, uh, 75 potential, good with contact, plate vision, discipline, fielding is pretty good as well. Speed, great speed already, and then stealing as well. So uh, between him and Gowdy, I think I would take Gowdy just because he's a lot better defensively. But Leifer still is not a bad option at all. So starting pitcher, Lane Min Miniso, 20 years of age, 75 potential. He has got the hits over 9 at 60, Ks over 9 at 65, walks over 9 at 75, home runs over 9 at 50, so that's a bit of a red flag. Uh, control at 70, velocity at 80, break at 70, arm strength is at 80 potential as well. So he could be someone we keep our eye on, but I, I don't like that home runs over nine. That's a little kind of scary. Center fielder, Adam O'Malley. We have a lot of center fielders here. Great speed and stealing. Uh, about average everywhere else. 70 potential as well. Uh, Xavier Noble, 65 potential. He's actually, the funny thing is, he's got a better overall right now than his potential says. So he'd be someone, if you pick him, who you bring in right away. But it, even... The game says his MLB ETA is 2025 plus. So you got to be really careful about this pick. But he is very well rounded everywhere. He's got 70s and, and 60s, 65s everywhere. So if you're looking for someone who you could potentially bring in sooner rather than later, you could definitely take a look at this guy. But the downside is his overall is currently higher than his potential is. Third baseman Carlos Arturo. 
19 years of age, 75 potential as a third baseman. He's average everywhere other than speed, which is a little bit above average. And not much else to him other than his potential there. Brandon Wayne, 70 potential left fielder. We already have a left fielder in in Willard Rutherford. And of course, right now in David Peralta. But he seems pretty solid when it comes to all of his attributes that have the potential to grow. His offense is generally no lower than a 55 and no higher than a 60. And all of his defense is no lower than a 70, uh, than a 65 and no higher than a 75. So definitely a defensive left fielder there. We already have a defensive left fielder in Rutherford. I wouldn't, he wouldn't be my first choice for sure. Uh, Michael Seals. This is the other 80 potential I was looking at. Uh, he's a first baseman. So you could argue whether we should take him or not, but he does have that 80 potential and he's, his batting stats are all decent, 55, 60, but his fielding's at a 75 arm strength. He doesn't really need as a first baseman, but he has it anyway, so he could be versatile. You could put him at second shortstop, potentially. He's got the reaction at 75. He'd be great, a great first baseman. And I believe that is the rest of everyone who we have fully scouted. This guy here, Pedro Saucedo, is not completely scouted. He's like 95% scouted. But still not 100%. And then there's Joaquin Ybarra, who also currently has the 80 potential, but it's not 100%. So I was just going over all the 100% guys that we know for sure about their potential and overall. And we'll end it off with the draft. So let's get to it. Go to the draft. And where are we picking? We are picking 18th. All right, so we should end up... I mean, we're definitely not going to end up getting any of those blue chip prospects, but at least one of those 80 potentials should drop to us. So let's see what happens here. So Blocker goes first overall to the Blue Jays, and now we are picking. Let's see who is available. So Sean Trojanowski is available. Now, is that other 80 potential available? Yes, Michael Seals is here as well. So for me, it's between Seals and Trojanowski. And Trojanowski is a little bit more well-rounded. And Seals is a bit better defensively. But he doesn't have the speed or stealing that Trojanowski has at 60 and 55. So Trojanowski, once again, is pretty much just well-rounded everywhere. And Seals is decently well-rounded as well, but he's not as good with speed. And he's got slightly better fielding and arm accuracy, and arm strength, I would say. Actually, the arm strength and arm accuracy are exactly the same so really it's like do you want the better fielder or do you want the guy who is more well-rounded with a better speed and for this team we're currently at least last i checked we're 18th in speed and trojanowski is 50 overall let's see what what is seals 50 overall so it's they're both going to take a pretty decent amount of time to develop seals is 21 Trojanowski, however, is 19, so I think we're going to be taking Trojanowski here, the 19-year-old, with our first-round pick. Welcome to Arizona, Sean Trojanowski. So, unfortunately, we skipped over the entire second round without having a pick, and then there was the compensatory round, and now we're in competitive balance round B. So, and unfortunately, Michael Seals went first in the competitive balance round B to Kansas City. We were four picks off. From Michael Seals and <laughs> and uh, Trojanowski, so that's that sucks. You hate to see it, but maybe we could get one of these seventy-five potential guys. Michael Gowdy, he was someone who I was really targeting as well. He's a defensive center fielder who also has pretty decent batting attributes. Michael Gowdy might be the next pick here. Esteban Ramos, he's pretty good as well. He's only got that seventy potential as compared to Gowdy with the seventy-five. Xavier Noble, he's well-rounded, but he only has that 65 potential and 70 overall already. I would rather take Gowdy. Esparza, uh, I would definitely rather take Gowdy. Bullington, he's great with speed and fielding and reaction, but Gowdy is just a little bit more well-rounded than Bullington. So, of the guys who we have completely scouted left, of the five guys that we have completely scouted, I like Michael Gowdy the best. He has that 75 potential. He's great defensively and got some above average batting stats as well. So he can hold his own offensively. So welcome to the Arizona Diamondbacks, Michael Gowdy. And picking in the third round now. Let's see who is available. And we have a couple of 65 potentials available. There's Xavier Noble. 
who's still available. There's Maurizio Esparza. And of these two guys, I think I would rather take Noble. And those are the only two 100% accurate guys who we have scattered remaining. So of these two guys, I think I would take Xavier Noble for sure. He's more MLB ready. Even though it says 2025 plus, you could still, I think, potentially use him given the 70 overall. So welcome to the Arizona Diamondbacks, Xavier Noble. All right, so round number four. And at this point, we're really just taking a shot in the dark. I mean, there is Maurizio Esparza, who's still available. I guess he could be solid. You know what? We'll just take him anyway, because he's the last fully accurate guy who we have uncovered. So, welcome to Arizona, Maurizio Esparza. And we'll just use our last couple of picks here to just take shots in the dark, see if we can get lucky with a Rich Rosario type situation. Because Rosario, Rosario was insanely lucky with that 80 potential in the fifth round. That's, I believe, where we got him. I think I'm going to take Richard Validio here. Yeah, he's the pick because he's already got several attributes that are already MLB ready. So welcome to the Arizona Diamondbacks, Richard Validio. For me, it's either Villanueva or James. And James, he has less power, a lot better speed in stealing. And Villanueva better in terms of his all-around offense or do we just take a pitcher <laughs> I might just take a pitcher to be honest you know I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark on a on a relief pitcher here I think that's the best option for us at this point so Eric Guzman welcome to the Arizona Diamondbacks and that will conclude the draft for 2021 and let's get to signing those players and see what they actually are so here we go let's see we have an 86 potential in Sean Trojanowski, an 84 in Michael Gowdy, a 66 in Xavier Noble, that's rough, uh, 72 in Mauricio Esparza, 64 for Validio, and a 66 for Guzman. So we struck out on Guzman, unfortunately. Whatever, he'll be good, I guess, for double A. But Trojanowski and Gowdy, I'm, lo I'm really looking forward to. So we will definitely sign all these guys. And there you go. They have all been signed to contracts, and they will be ready to go for next season. So I'll end it off there. Uh, let me know what you guys think of your Arizona Diamondbacks. It looks like we're finally in a much better position. And what I'll do for next episode, we will turn critical situations on, and we'll have a little bit more gameplay involved since there will be less micromanaging without any, uh, any scouting involved. So I'll see you guys in the next one when we continue year number three.